Amazon and Target sick outs, strikes, walkouts, um, rightfully so. Uh, so to kind of play a little recap, we, we saw earlier uh, in the month, at the end of March, early May, early April, uh, we saw that, um, you know, uh, Amazon in Staten Island, uh, they were striking. They, they, they did a wildcat strike. They walked out during lunch. Um, and they basically said that we're, we're done with this shit. They're, they're, they're not putting us in a safe work environment. Um, somebody was sick in the Staten Island warehouse. The upper management told, you know, uh, the, the upper upper management basically told the people that were managing the warehouse to 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 to, to ignore it they just said send that person home um, and don't worry about the rest of it keep working keep processing orders keep sending shit out uh, and they were like no this is bullshit and they organized a walkout and they walked out um, and then Chris Smalls who was the organizer of that walkout uh, got fired for quote unquote not practicing safety uh concerns not practicing social distancing is what they claim now this is literally the company that found out somebody had COVID 19 and said keep working anyway in tight quarters at the obscene hours that they make these warehouse employees work obscene hours with their timed pee breaks And then every day at 3.15 p.m., there's a, a video screen that gets pulled down from the ceiling, and it's just got a picture of Jeff Bezos, and, and then it, it's like a, uh, and then it turns into a gif of Jeff Bezos just staring at you, and then just laughing, and staring at you, and then laughing, and then you have to bow to, uh, to that, um, and then everybody collectively has to prick their fingers and drop a little bit of blood into a vial um, that gets then put into a, a box, uh, an Amazon box, and shipped to Jeff Bezos so that he can, uh, I don't know, uh, do something with it. Uh, maybe bathe in it, uh, blood orgy drink it. I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know what sociopaths like to do with the blood of the working class. These are the working conditions. Uh, that <laughs> um, that's obviously a joke. There might be some people that take that shit too seriously. Uh, but the working conditions are fucking terrible at Amazon. Uh, so now what we're looking at, as of yesterday, as of yesterday this happened, is an additional 350 Amazon workers are going on strike at 50 more locations. Um, so that's a, that's a good amount of people. That's a good amount of people that are doing it. Um, and you know, I, uh, have, I hate buying shit from Amazon to begin with. Um, you know, there've been certain times I'll admit it. I've had to be forced to fucking use Amazon and, uh, I really do my best not to because he is a goddamn monster. Um, and he is an, a callous, uncaring, just fucking douche nozzle. I hate, I just fucking hate this guy so much. Um. Uh, so, I, I mean, you should stand in solidarity and you should stop ordering shit from Amazon. That's my opinion. Um, if you really want to see a change in the world, then use something different. Find a local place that you can get your dildos from. I'm sure that there is an adult mart. Uh, is, I mean, Adam and Eve might be selling some dildos. You know, if it's that imperative that you get your uh, cock-shaped glassware, then, you know, find a, a, a local mom-and-pop uh, cocksmith and have them, you know, construct a, a, a nice, um, you know, homemade dildo. Which, by the way, that is one of the complaints of the Amazon strikers, too, is that there's too many non-essentials uh, and most of these warehouses do uh, ship out sex toys. America's America's uh, known for its priorities. May it be good or bad, mostly bad, but it, it's known for those priorities. Uh, <laughs> there's a local coalition of organizers that are representing these workers called Athena. 
that's who has been uh, organizing these strikes. And um, basically what these workers are asking for is uh, a shutdown of the warehouses. And the warehouses should be um, sending out essential goods only. Um, you know, so like we're going to have to deal with, you know, one-year-old dildos, you guys. We're just going to have to deal with that. It's going to be okay. I promise you, it's going to be okay. You don't need the top of the line fucking Lexus of vibrators this month. You'll be okay with the same old, uh, you know, vibrators that you've had uh, or lotions for dudes. I don't know. I don't know what dudes are. But it's a lot of sex toys, and and you, you just keep the ones that you have, you know? Just hold on to the one. You don't need to spend that stimulus check uh, on sex toys. Drug, I mean, spend them on drugs. Drugs for, you know, buy, so help your local friendly drug dealer. Just fucking stand in solidarity. That's what you got to do. You got to stand in solidarity with these Amazon strikers and uh, uh, buy drugs from your local drug dealer. That's That's the way that we move America forward. <laughs> but these workers, they're asking for um, a shutdown of the of these Amazon warehouses um, to do a deep clean, to do a thorough deep clean, um, and offer the employees two weeks with pay. And that's probably where they're having a problem. They're just like, we're not going to make any money. We're not going to make this astronomical amount of money by by trying to be opportunistic about fear, by saying that there's never going to be any sort of consumer good ever again. If you don't support Amazon today, if you don't support Amazon today, you'll be done. It'll be done. There'll be no more TVs, no more laptops, no more cables, no more headphones, no more dildos. It'll be over. We can't utilize that fear to make these employees work slave hours. How dare you? And they want Amazon to only put out essential items, <laughs> right? Like put a pause on non-essential items um, while we're in the situation. Now, um, Amazon is, the, the Staten Island case that I talked about earlier, it, it, Amazon, that's not the only one that they hid. 130 cases were reported from Amazon warehouses. Uh, 30, over 30 confirmed. Over 30 of them were confirmed cases of COVID-19. And they still haven't taken any actions to sanitize these places, to uh, offer better, to offer just healthcare, to just pay for it, testing. Nothing. They still make them work as much as they work, still make them work in the conditions that they have to work in. And and this big claim that, oh, but we care. We care so much about our employees. We care about our, our customers. That's why whenever people get diagnosed with this highly commutable disease, then people are touching and coughing and sneezing on all of this stuff and putting it into a box and sending it out to the people. We care about them. We care about the customer. That's why we let these people sneeze into the boxes and send out just germ-covered dildos. That's, that's because we care. So these workers are planning a sick out on April 24th uh, over the work conditions. And not only that, uh, but over the firing of two tech people that complained about the, uh, that, that not complained, but criticized the work conditions of Amazon, criticized the climate uh, that Amazon has as a corporation. Uh, and uh, what's going to happen now is Jeff Bezos is going to be paying um, for a legislation to ban all of the mirrors in America so that he doesn't have to look at himself in the mirror ever again. He never has to self-reflect. All, all reflective surfaces are now banned and they will be covered with left paint, lead paint, so says God King Bezos, and we have to do it. Cover it all with the lead paint. It's for the benefit, not just for the God King, but also for you. Nobody wants to look at themselves. Just enjoy this gift that the God King has given you.
here's the amazing thing, right? These these workers are put in conditions where there's 500, 700 employees in, a, in, in these warehouses, right? Trying to meet these orders, meet these demands, which is probably why it's like, if you want to stand in solidarity with these fucking Amazon workers, you should. And you should stop ordering shit from Amazon. You don't need to watch the next season of The Boys from Amazon. Okay, fucking, you don't need to have Amazon Prime. There's like 900 different streaming services. Subscribe to YouTube channels from independent comedians that are losing their eyesight for you. <laughs> but they, but they're just like 500 to 700 people that are in a lot of these warehouses. And in a lot of these places, they have to stand shoulder to shoulder. You know, they, 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 sometimes they don't give them masks. Sometimes they don't give them gloves and they are sick and they have to cough and they have to sneeze and that, that you know, they're not practicing social distancing things. Yet, the organizer of the, of the original strike in Staten Island gets fired for not practicing social distance. Yet, this is how, this is how the corporation that fired somebody for not, ha not practicing social distancing actually behaves. And they're gonna do what Andrew Carnegie did to 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 Frick, right? They'll blame the managers. They'll be like, "Oh, the warehouse managers are the problem." We we t we said social distancing guidelines, you know. We said that. We said it. But these managers, look at them. They don't care. They don't care. This is a, a safety protocol because the because the, the the upper upper management, you know, the the oligarchical management. The, the Bezoses and, and the spokespeople that we hire and the PR reps and the CFOs and the CTOs, we care. We love these. We love our customers. You know, we don't want them. We say social distancing, but look at these managers. And then they throw the managers under the fucking bus. And that Stockholm syndrome kicks back in. That American Stockholm syndrome kicks back in. There's an Amazon spokesperson that came out to talk about this, uh, the strikes and the conditions, the work conditions, and she literally said these accusations are unfounded as she put a blindfold around her face. So a vast amount of employees showed up to work. A vast amount of employees showed up to work. Yeah, because they're fucking scared, dude. They're scared to lose their job. They're scared to lose what little income that they have. They're scared to lose their health care for their families because they're not employees. They're hostages. They're enslaved hostages. We are like this close to Jeff Bezos coming out with his own money so that his employees can go to a Whole Foods and, you know, use that play money to buy a cookie. Your whole day's wages can be used for buying a cookie. I'm surprised that Jeff Bezos hasn't tried to just purchase, like, an apartment complex to try to house his fucking employees. Like, it hasn't gone down that route. This is what they did with the coal miners. I'm astounded we haven't gotten to that point yet. And and he might have plans to do that. I don't know. He might have plans to fucking buy up some real estate, right? To construct a, you know, like a, a small apartment and he's like for um for 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 just, you know, 10% of the Bezos bucks that I'm going to pay you. For just 10% of that, you get to live in this luxury studio closet that I'm graciously providing you as your god kink. And you get to shop at the Whole Foods with a bunch of other people, regular people, and some of these people, they might be rich. You get to be amongst the riches. Isn't that amazing? We are giving you the luxury to do that. I mean, this is the attitude that he has. So Amazon's not the only one, right? We talked about Target being the other one. Um, Target is also staging a sick out. Uh, they're doing it on May 1st, May Day. Uh, International Workers Day uh, because Target is not taking care of their employees as well either. Um, I think it's like 30 grocery store employees have uh, died 
because of uh, because of COVID nineteen, because of being exposed to this thing. They probably got exposed. They probably got sick, uh, and couldn't take the days off, so they had to come into work and uh, you know strain their body and strain their mind, get stressed out. Come, you know, their immune system gets uh, their, their their immunity gets decreased because they're, they're, there's too much stress. And since the stimulus, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the, the part-time employees, because that's what they, they end up being part-time employees, uh, they end up um, seeing more customers. And my mom works at, um, at Target. And, I, you know, it's like the, the disrespect and the, the, the craziness and the anger and the entitlement of these customers has just gone through the fucking roof through the roof and, and even in the article they talk about this right even even these people that are that are talking about this in the article that i read on usa today was was talking about how you know the, the customers have gotten far more rude um they've gotten uh they've gotten way angrier and they've uh, like there's like people spitting on each other and shit like that's crazy you should treat these people with respect you should be treating these people with kindness regardless of whether we're in a pandemic or not by the way Regardless of whether we're in a pandemic or not, you should be treating them. So there is a employee activist um, program uh, called Target Target look, Target Workers Unite, um, and they put out this sick out pledge. Right. So let's read this sick out pledge. Let's see here. So there's a document. We'll run through what this document says as well. Uh, It says, by taking this pledge, you are committing to stand in solidarity with other Target team members and workers across the nation who know our jobs still remain unsafe during the COVID-19 pandemic. At Target, the foot traffic and guest behavior has been atrocious, putting us at needless risk when greater safety measures are required to ensure social distancing workers nor guests have been required to wear masks uh, i will say that the, that they did give my mom masks um and gloves uh, you know so they and then and then like i think like a week ago they installed the plexiglass stuff so you know over like a like a month and a half after all this shit goes down they're like yeah we'll fucking give you gloves and shit like that uh our maximum capacity of guests have been set too high uh yeah it's like 450 people are allowed to go into a target where like trader joe's and like i i i I usually go to trader joe's which is where i get this glassware from (laughs) as you can see the the label's still on it and i use it to drink my coffee and my water um but i go to trader joe's um and they you know have you have to wait and there's maybe 25 30 people in there at a time maybe um which obviously is going to decrease their profits, but it's going to increase the safety. Um, so let's continue. Our, our maximum capacity of guests has been set too high. Their demeanor is also casual and reckless. They do not respect our space. They are not coming into stores exclusively for essential items, but are occupying our stores out of boredom or for fun, which is, which is so crazy. I've never fucking understood this thing. Right. Like when I was a teenager, I used to be a little mall rat. I get I get that. I worked in a mall, so I would always like hang out there afterwards. You know, like my friends would come see me after I would work and we would hang out at the mall. We'd go to the Hot Topic and check out the band shirts, whatever the fuck. Right. Like we do dumb teenager shit. But like if you're like an adult person, like you don't need to go hang out in a mall. You don't need to go hang out in a fucking shopping center. Like, that's not a thing that you need to do as an adult. Like, if you need to go walk around, if you need to be outside, go the fuck outside. Like, walk around your neighborhood. You know? Like, go, you know, and be with nature for a minute. Check out some trees. Breathe some fresh air. Don't fucking go to a Target and then be shitty to an employee. Because you're bored. Find a hobby. Holy shit. Can you find a hobby? Maybe do some self-reflection. 
instead of going to Target, which is just like such a what an obsessive. This is so. This is such proof that fucking people are just obsessed, just obsessed with capitalism. That even when you can't spend money, even when you don't need to be in an, in a fucking church for capitalism, in a church for shopping, in these fucking huge monoliths that you need to go spend your money, and even when you can't spend your money at those places, that's where you choose to go. You do not need to fucking do that. You just go anywhere else. Holy shit. Sit outside on a park bench for 10 minutes and think about yourself. Do some self-reflection. You know, call your sister, call your mother, call somebody, have a conversation, reconnect with a friend, learn a new skill, watch a fucking show, subscribe to independent comedians YouTube channels. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm allowed to be selfish every once in a while, even if it is, even if it's just me kind of fucking around a little bit. The guests' desire for recreation are not more important than the team members' needs for safety. Our pay and compensation are not adequate enough to cover the costs of hospitalization or funeral expenses related to COVID-19. They got a $2 uh, an hour pay raise during COVID-19. That's their hazard pay. Hazard pay is supposed to be double what you normally make. Double. Which would push it closer to $15 an hour. <laughs> like, even with hazard pay... If you're getting minimum wage, you're still not getting $15 an hour, which, by the way, is not what minimum wage should be. If it keeps up with inflation, I think it should be like $22 or $24 an hour. Uh, it should be far higher. In 2001, when, when the idea of increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour, yeah, that made sense. But now it's like you got to be – the minimum wage needs to be way higher than that. Uh, so this is why the Target team members are engaging in a massive sick-out and exercising our rights to refuse unsafe work conditions as defined by the Occupational Safety and Hazards Act, OSHA, General Duty Clause, which states in Section 5A1, each employer shall furnish to his employees, which is like you can just say their employees, maybe update the list a little to you know be inclusive, uh, employees' employment and a place of employment which are free from recognized hazards that are causing or are likely to cause death or serious physical harm to their employees. By engaging in concerted activity with fellow team members, we are also exercising our rights to organize and strike as defined by Section 7 of the Na National Labor Relations Act. We talked about that uh, a little bit yesterday when we were talking about the Taft-Hartley Act as well, which tried to fight back against a lot of this stuff. Um, these federal laws ban any employer from illegal retaliation, including wrongful termination, reduction of hours, demotion, etc., against any employee who exercises these rights. We will file charges for any retaliatory action against, uh, and their representatives may engage it may engage in towards workers exercising these rights. Target Workers Unite calls on all team members to join us this May 1st, International Workers Day, along with workers across industries and across the nation to fight for our lives and ensure our safety. So, and then you can fill, and then if you're a Target employee, you can fill out this form. Um, it asks for a pledge, it asks for your phone number, and then it's gonna, it also, they also ask you about uh, recovering lost wages. So they might be able to help um, and recovering um, lost wages. They're, they're also helping you organize the strike, um, training people about labor, labor strikes and stuff like that during uh, a sick out. Uh, so, you know, they are providing uh, a way to help people throughout, while, they're, while they're getting people to strike. Uh, so I think that's a very cool thing. And I think, once again, you should be in solidarity with these strike moves. Uh, employees. We should stand with them. Um, and I hope that people will because this is important. Again, this is about the future. This is about making these workplaces better. This is about holding these corporations accountable and saying we're not going to let you get away with shit just because you're a big business. 
fuck your team of lawyers. Fuck your your investments. Fuck your your New York Stock Exchange points. None of that shit matters. You're not treating us people properly. And that's what we're going to fight for. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to sit there and and oh, you know, and where you you'll never see those people that were out protesting this weekend at any of these things. You'll you will not see those people coming in and standing in solidarity with these strikers. Champions of Liberty are going to stand in side by side with fucking Amazon because they have Stockholm Syndrome with these corporations because they're not trying to say reopen the country. They're trying to say reopen the country so we can go back to work so that we can go back to being corporate slaves. They're not pushing back against the corporatocracy. They're not pushing back against the oligarchy. They should be encouraged to. If you want to strike, if you want to be out there on the streets and protest something, protest this. Protest unfettered capitalism. Protest a, a, a mistreatment of the working class. The failures of both the Democratic and the Republican Party to actually help the worker, to actually help the people. Protest that. Fight for a better America. Fight for freedoms with logic behind it. Fight for a compassionate economy. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications when uh, I put up new videos. I'm going to be putting up videos every single day, so there's going to be a ton of content coming out on this channel. Uh, there's going to be storytelling. Uh, commentary about the media, uh, historical commentary, philosophical commentary, all surrounding uh, stand-up comedy. If you, if you like comedic commentary about these topics, then this is the channel for you. Uh, and if you uh, come to the channel often and you haven't subscribed, what, 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 what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Get, get, get subscribed to this. Come, come hang out with us. <laughs> But uh, for more information about me, you can go to my website, uh, ramannoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums, which if you snag them from Bandcamp, are available as Pay What You Want, which means that they're uh, available for free. Uh, you can check out past videos. You can check out past podcasts. And uh, you can donate if you have the ability to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. You can donate directly on my website and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And Or you can see how, you know, the various different ways that you can make a donation. And you can also find out about live stand-up comedy events. Well, live-ish stand-up comedy events. I'm going to be doing uh, a test show on Zoom. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. They are free, and there's only 10 spots available. This is going to be a test show to find out, you know, what format's going to work, if there are technical difficulties that I need to figure out, and then figuring out uh, what consistent day to try to do um, these Zoom shows. I'll probably do a couple of them uh, while we are uh, currently in the quarantine situation, so... That is available. Uh, the tickets for that are available right now. There's only 10 spots available. Uh, so make sure that you grab them um, before they're all gone. And then once we decide the date for the first official live-ish stand-up <laughs> comedy Zoom show, the virtual stand-up comedy show, uh, there will be um, about 15 tickets available for the first one. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go from there and we'll see, see what happens from there. Uh, so grab those tickets and come hang out with us uh, on the Zoom. Uh, like I said, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you hit that like. Make sure that you share this out. Get the word out about these videos. And uh, and you can go to my website to find out more stuff. Uh, Till the next video. Take it easy.